Hello everybody, and welcome to the last episode of The Radical Geek. Yeah, I've <laughs> ran this over four years, and I'm sorry folks, if you've been, watching, been fans of my show, uh, this is my last episode. But, fear not, I do have a good program here, I have some interesting people here. I went to Erie Camp, I talked to a few people there. Um, a little bit of a mix today, on this episode have Dorwood Mack, a science fiction author out of Toronto, Canada, who's written several short stories and a few novels. I have from Demon Productions, Sherry Fairchild and Frank Nicosia. And, uh, you know, they also will be there in their full zombie makeup, talking about the movie Fester they were in, as well as some other things. And last and definitely not least, I have entertainer, producer, and Canada's geekiest media personality, Liana Kersner. Well, let's talk to them, see why they do what they do, and have some fun. Hope you enjoy. All right, I've got science fiction author, Dorwood Mack, and uh, can you tell me how you got started writing science fiction? Well, Bill, uh, since I was a child, I've been a fan of several science fiction TV shows. Uh, for example, Thunderbirds, I really loved Thunderbirds and later Star Trek and then when the Star Wars movies came out I, uh, I became very much a science fiction fan and I also began to read science fiction as well because of my interest in these TV shows and you know as time went on I, I decided well maybe I'd like to uh, make my own contributions to the genre too you know write my own stories science fiction stories and so I tried to when I was younger uh, they didn't sell but you know every writer needs to go through a period where they're learning about life and relationships and the world and the environment and and so on and, and mature and after that period uh, I also took a course about writing science fiction taught by uh, Robert J. Sawyer a, a very popular Canadian science fiction writer and I learned a lot from that course and after that I resumed writing stories again and started selling stories to uh, m anthologies and magazines and that's how I got into writing. All right and uh, all right uh, can you tell me some of the stuff that you write about and what you actually you know and some of your uh, titles. Yeah I write mostly uh, soft science fiction uh, as opposed to hard science fiction. I tend to concentrate on social sciences and stories about society and social issues. Uh, many of my stories have to do with the relationship between religion and science. For example, my story uh, Transubstantiation is about Jesus returning as a troublemaking teenage girl on a space station around Mars. And my novel, The Shrine of the Siren Stone, is about uh, Japanese androids and their relationship to Shintoism and Buddhism, the two major reli religions of Japan. Um, I've also written uh, stories with a lot of Asian themes in them, uh, you know, yes, Japanese right. themes or Chinese themes. Okay. Right? Which is something kind of refreshing yeah. among all the other persons, a bunch of, bunch of white guys. Yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Is very know, nice. And there's nothing wrong with stories with a bunch of white guys in them, right? <laughs> yeah, but I know. But we, yeah. It's nice to see some diversity. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's what I'm getting at is, is that there's nothing wrong with stories with a bunch of white guys in them, but there's also nothing wrong with diversity as well. Um, and uh, I edited The Dragon and the Stars, the first ever anthology of science fiction and fantasy written by ethnic Chinese living outside China. Okay. And uh, here, here's our publication. This is a rice paper magazine, an Asian Canadian literary magazine. This is its first ever science fiction and fantasy issue. And I edited this with uh, J.F. Girard, another science fiction writer. Uh, and this just came out last year. All right. All right. Anything else? Um, well, let's just, uh, I think we mostly found out. Um, how do you get some of your inspiration for what you want to write? Well, you know, the inspiration comes from all sorts of interesting places. Uh, uh, anything can can sort of inspire me and, and, and I can spin a story out of it. Uh, I, uh, for example, my story, uh, It Came to Eater, Chicken Wings, uh, that was inspired by a visit to uh, Hooters of Baltimore, a Hooters restaurant, of all things. And, and out of that, I managed to spin a story about a Hooters girl who meets an alien at a car show, 
right? Uh, one of my more recent stories, Mecca Jesus, about a Japanese town that makes an android of Jesus and uses it as a tourist attraction. That was inspired by, by two real life stories. One is that I actually visited a Jesus theme park in Orlando, Florida called Holy Land Experience where they have a guy dressed up as Jesus walking around. And the other one is that there actually is a town called Shingo in Japan which it builds itself as being the last home of Jesus. And of course, they, 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 have a, they have a tourism industry based around that. And out of these two real life incidents, I use that for my story, Mecca Jesus. All right. So yeah, I can, uh, it's amazing. You can take real life situations uh, from the real world and just turn them into science fiction fantasy situations if you put the right spin on them. Okay, uh, well, it looks like we're done. Uh, thank you, uh, Derwin. And, uh, uh, oh, actually, before we go, is there any place online where we can uh, see you, uh, find out more about you? Yeah, you can check out my website, which is uh, derwinmacsf.com. So it's D-E-R-W-I-N-M-A-K-S-F.com. All right, I'll put that in the show notes, but thank you, and uh, enjoy the rest of the convention. Okay, thanks, Bill. In 1939, Timely Comics published its first issues. It later changed its name, first to Atlas Comics and then to Marvel Comics. In 2014, Marvel polled its fans asking for the 75 greatest Marvel stories from those 75 years and published that list in print form. The unofficial 75 Greatest Marvels countdown will walk through all 75 of these stories every Wednesday from December 31st, 2014 to June 1st, 2016. Join me, Blaine Dowler, and a cadre of other hosts, including established podcasting greats and emerging talents, as we run through the list, discuss each story in the context of its original release, and determine just what makes it so great. The unofficial 75 Greatest Marvels Countdown can be found at Bureau42.com, on iTunes, and on Stitcher. Okay, I've got Sherry Fairchild and Frank Nicosia. Here with the uh, Decon Productions. <laughs> Demon Productions. Demon Productions. Productions. I got to type over. Sorry. Decon. We're not rat killers. We're people killers. <laughs> people killers. Good way of putting it. Um, and uh, can you tell me about Demon Productions? Well, we uh, like to do charity events and uh, all kinds of stuff. We do free zombie makeovers for okay. kids, adults, whoever decides they want to be infected today. Okay, because I see you dressed up, you're done with uh, zombie makeup yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I, I haven't put all my blood or anything on yet today because uh, I... You yeah, haven't fed yet. Yeah, haven't been fed yet. There we go. I'm still hungry. <laughs> okay. And, uh, all right, so how do you get started doing this? Oh, we've been into horror ever since we were teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, Friday the 13th and Halloween, you know, the original horror flicks. Okay. And one day she said she wanted to be a zombie, and we found a zombie group in Buffalo, and we started hanging out with them. Yeah, we were doing um, horror conventions, you know, Rock okay. and Shock and Horror Hound. And in Ohio and Boston. And then we yes. saw Buffalo has their own zombie thing, so we... We got sucked into it, kind of. Mm. All right, and um, now, uh, so can you tell me some of these uh, zombie events you do? Uh, let's see, we're doing the Thousand Island Zombie Walk on the 24th of this month okay. um, in beautiful, beautiful Cape Vincent, New York, okay. um, where we filmed the movie Annulment, a zombie movie, a zombie okay. rom-com. Okay. <laughs> like Romeo and... Yeah, a rom-com. Zombie and Juliet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> zombie and Juliet. Something <laughs> like that. No, Tromeo and Juliet. Tromeo and Juliet. There you go. Yeah. I'm not um, much else? of a horror fan, but I do know a little bit about it. I, <laughs> yeah. I know people who are dated a girl who's in horror, and I, she goes, is this scary? I go, no. <laughs> That's the thing. I, it's like, it's scary. No. No. Yep. Yeah. No offense. I like horror movies that, like, you don't see it, but you hear it. It's like... That's what I like. You get, yeah, because then, my head. Yep, cause then my the head. noise that's behind you becomes the noise that's on the TV, and you're just going to mm -hmm. more imagination. <laughs> yeah, imagination goes wild. Yeah. And um, let's see, also, I've heard you are basically premiering a movie at the convention Sunday, Fester. Can you tell yes, me about that? Sunday at noon, um, I 
I play June, and Frank plays Randy. my abusive, mean, mean boyfriend, Alcoholic. Randy. <laughs> and he is so mean to my my poor little boy that he grows up to be a monster. Interesting. Bullying is the subject, right? Yeah. But not before he gets... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets him when he's a kid. I, I, got, so. <laughs> I, got, what, I got what I deserved. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you've talked about some. Have you done other uh, horror-related movies and oh. monster movies in that? We did. Um, we were we were in uh, Return to Newcomb High by Lloyd Kaufman. Oh, um, with uh, yeah, yeah, Troma. Yeah, Troma. Troma, Troma oh, Productions. Yeah, Kill, and Kill, Killer Rack. Killer Rack by Greg um, Lamberson. Yep, Greg Lamberson is here this weekend. Here. Okay, can you tell me about Killer Rack? Killer Rack. Uh, you may want to use as a female. <laughs> the movie with big eyes. <laughs> Uh, okay. No, no. Mutated. Mutated killer boobs. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lots of blood, lots of 80s comedy, you know, Slap, retro. Slapstick. Yeah, retro uh, a lot of illusions, you know, a lot, lot of. Um, Practical effects. Yeah. and a, Well, no, actually, yeah, no effects. Old, no CGI. No old, CGI. Old, old, it was um, claymation like. Okay, I was thinking like practical effects, you know, non-computer generated effects and yes, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. Which they call practical effects. And yes. That. Okay. And uh, what about, um, okay, and I still want to do a movie, you should do a movie themed something around in the area called the Love, of the Love Canal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely could do that. Yes. <laughs> yes. We are a product of that. The, right? the, the murderous mutated monsters from beneath the ground mm -hmm. in the Love Canal. <laughs> and that, that's also what we do. We network the, the independent film. Okay. Yeah, Community. we help people find locations and stuff like that okay. if we can. What's the most yeah. interesting uh, person you found that uh, helped uh, network for uh, for movies? Wow. Um, well, it's not really a movie. It's a traveling art project that oh. we help from Italy. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. That's nice. Savano, Martha's Hale. Yes. Okay. And it's uh, instrument, music. Dark photography, art okay. show. Yes. Wow. Okay. And uh, anywhere, if you got any shout outs to say, uh, you know, if, the, if we can check out more of your stuff on the web, do you have a website or anything like uh, that? We, well, we don't. We have our Facebook page and our Twitter, Demon okay. Productions. Um, we don't have a website yet. Okay. Because I am not very good on the computer at all. <laughs> but you can find us at Demon Productions on Facebook. Okay. Yep. All right, I'll put Please that in the like the page. Um, and uh, like I said, you can. What are we, we're doing a Comic Con on October 10th. Okay, I don't know which if you one? Guys, that's um, Joe D's Toys, Collectibles, and Comic Books. Is that in the Buffalo area? Yes, it is. Um, Lackawanna at the Columbus Hall. Okay. Tomorrow is a disco. To, well, we'll be here too for mm. the party. Okay. All right, well, it looks like I got everything here. Um, thank you. Thank, you, thank for you for having us. You're welcome. Okay, I got. Leanna Kirshner, mm -hmm. and uh, from Canadian Television and Canadian Media here. And American Internets. American you know, Internets everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but it's an American it's like company. A, it's, a, it's an effective, it's like a slime mold. It, it, well, <laughs> it's, it's like a slime mold. But it's video games, so it's a digital slime mold. Yes, true. <laughs> sure, it all sort of goes everywhere. But yeah, escapismagazine.com. Escapismagazine.com, all right, and uh, let's see here. I have you here as your partner in crime in the Canadian Airways with a foul mouth sock. <laughs> that is a past life, yes. Past life with Ed the Sock. I've watched some of those. Um, but you do a lot of stuff with uh, FutureCon? That was, yeah, charity fundraising that we did. We're taking a bit of a break from that for various reasons. But yeah, still heavily involved okay. in various charities. Oh, great. And also, What's this thing about agents of cosplay? I was that's that's the Escapist magazine show. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm here at Ericon for sort of wearing two hats. One is the Agents of Cosplay cosplay show, which is a uh, non-competitive, drama-free look at cosplay and cosplay okay. culture. Uh, and then also here for the book, Wrestling with Gods, Chester X 18, which is a anthology of uh, Canadian writers exploring faith in science fiction and fantasy. All right, which I think, does Derwood have a, Derwood Mac Derwin, a, yes, two, three interview? of the other guests at EerieCon, David Clink, J.M. Fry, and Derwin Mack are in the book, so we're doing a panel here. All right, and uh, all right, uh, a lot of stuff you do. Actually, you're a cosplayer yourself. I am. Which I've seen some pictures, very nice work. Thank you. Uh, what do you like to, which one do you, is your favorite to dress up as? Oh, that's like a 
asking about your favorite kid, it really depends on the weather and how much time I have. I mean, I've got three hours to burn and I don't want to wear high heels. I'll wear the Chitara costume if uh, I don't feel like spending three hours in makeup, but I'm not going to be on my feet all day. I'll wear the Ivy Valentine costume. The problem with Ivy is that I actually end up with welts on the back of my neck because of the way the costume's designed. The weight from here on, I know this is a family show, this is just an anatomical thing, don't make it dirty, but it, it does put too much weight on the back of my neck. All right. Okay, and uh, let's see what else is there. You also do, also a fan of video games. Yes, <laughs> I am a uh, video game um, critical analyst. Uh, thought leader is the word they've got us using. I look at video games from the perspective of a lot of the analysis in video games uses tools borrowed from film and television and it gets a lot of false negative positives and a lot of weird results. So one of the things I'm working on is trying to create tools for video games that are specific and accurate to video games, which means sort of looking at the sociological, anthropological, and, and ludonarrative, which is game plus story theories, and, and creating stuff that kind of works with that interactivity, meaning the game isn't finished until the player plays it, and that's unique right. in media. Well, one thing I find out is usually it's a kind of a, almost a balance you have to put of story and gameplay into a video game. When you do it properly, you can't firmly demarcate one for the other. Like, the game doesn't stop. The gameplay doesn't stop to accommodate the story. You, you want to sort of get... You want to try to make it meld together correctly. Yeah, yes. both I seamlessly. Think that's kind of a hard, and I think that's kind of, in gaming, is very unique. It's exceptionally difficult, and the way, the various ways the game developers do it is brilliant. I mean, I'm always amazed at, at the new things, and I'll see it like, you tricky word I can't say on this show. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes, you play a very clever person. All right. And uh, is there anything else that you do outside of that that you like to talk about? I have a YouTube channel uh, okay. that, that I'd love for people to check out. It's got a lot of video game stuff, but it's also got a lot of sort of geek adjacent stuff, as I call it. I, I, I mean, the predominant thing I do is I'm going to drop an F word, feminism. I do feminist critique of video games and geek stuff. All right. It is an F word, but I'm trying to show people that it's not sort of the negative crazy thing that people get on college campuses. It actually is practical and is still relevant and it's a, yeah. a, an interesting and unique mode of analysis that I think that in the modern world where we have um, more freedoms than we've ever had in history but also more restrictions and stigmas than we've ever had in history yes. in various ways too and identity and self-definition are, are such important things to people now because everything is so fluid that I think uh, identity-based analysis still has its place as long as it's not bonkers, yes. you know? As, as, as every, we can all be comfortable with our, with our titles um, and our labels. When I stop having a sense of humor about the whole thing, I'll stop doing it. For now, I, I still feel like I'm having fun with the whole thing, so I know I haven't gone off the deep end, and that's right. sort of my test. If I can't sort of laugh at the absurdity of what I'm doing, I mean, I'm not digging wells in the developing world, right? I'm not curing cancer. I'm looking at breasts in video games, <laughs> and as long as I keep that in focus, I'm All good. Right. Okay, um, looks like we're going to end it here. Thank you. No problem. Well, this is wraps up another, the last episode of The Radical Geek. I want to thank everybody who's been my, watched my program over the years and if you happen to catch it new trust me I'm still gonna leave them up so you get to go through the archives and go through the other stuff Radical Geek will still be there it's gonna be turning it lately if you've read it it's turning into a personal blog and I'll turn it into a personal blog I want to thank everybody who's been a guest who supported my endeavors promoted me and helped out with my documentary program that showcases geekdom. I'm not going to stop podcasting people. I do have another thing in the works coming up and I want to tell you about it. It's called Literary Wasteland. It's where I will review self-published speculative fiction. Uh, this is going to be an audio format, not video. And I hope
hope you get on Stitcher and iTunes and all that. And you can check it out at literarywasteland.com. So I hope that you uh, all listen to that. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for everybody that's come and supported me.